long ago, I had an opportunity to take a look at the all new third generation Toyota Tundra. Today, I'm gonna have an opportunity to drive it and both of its powertrains. Stick around. So here are the basics. There's no more V8 in the Tundra. That is being replaced by two different engine options. The first is a 3.5 liter V6. It makes 389 horsepower, 479 pound-feet of torque, and that's the one that I'm driving right now. It is more powerful and more efficient than that outgoing V8. Toyota's fuel economy estimates bear the efficiency part out at least. So big question is, am I missing the V8? Short answer, no. Unless it's maybe a throaty growl you're talking about. The V6 produces convincing power. It accelerates well and gets the full-size Tundra moving quickly. There's also a hybrid engine that Toyota's calling the iForce Max. That's the same 3.5 liter six, but it's paired with a 36 kilowatt motor and a 1.87 kilowatt battery located in the bell housing between the engine and the transmission. First thought about this engine, wow, it's got some guts. I love how the hybrid works in tandem with the turbo. It seamlessly shifts between hybrid power and gas it doesn't feel like it's tripping on itself at all. Acceleration feels quick and available at throttle tip-in. The only thing I'm missing are fuel economy numbers here, which just aren't available yet. So depending on which engine you get, which trim level you get, you do get specific drive modes. The one that I'm driving right now, this is just the iForce, and it does come with a Sport Plus mode. I'm just gonna goose it a little bit here. I mean, that acceleration is quick. At first blush, color me intrigued, Tundra. I'm going to really enjoy getting better acquainted, but both of Toyota's new drivetrains look like they're going to be really compelling. Now, both of these engines mate to a 10-speed automatic transmission. That's four more gears than you had with the last Tundra. Sometimes more gears doesn't always mean better, though. I'm not gonna lie, this transmission isn't blowing my socks off right out of the gate. It's had a bit of gear confusion when downshifting and it's not super quick. When it's off-road and you're not varying speeds as much, it holds gears and I'm happy. Again, the more time we spend with this truck, the more we're gonna get to know it, so stay tuned. The chassis that the Tundra drives on is all new. This was completely redeveloped for this truck and for the global Land Cruiser. Yeah, that's the one that we don't get in the U.S. anymore. Boo. That platform is a fully boxed, high-strength steel ladder frame. But engineers reduced weight by using aluminum parts in the body. Toyota's implemented a composite bed to reduce even more weight. It's still durable, though. Same as in the Tacoma. So the big news with the suspension is what's going on in the rear. No more leaf springs. The Tundra has moved to a multi-link system with coils. Holy cow, within five minutes of driving this truck, whichever trim level, you can instantly tell there is next level change in here. It feels every inch the new truck that it is, and that is a great thing. That new rear setup can also accommodate an optional self-leveling air suspension. So if you've got towing or payload, it will adjust automatically for what you need, making the ride that much more pleasant, especially on long jaunts. So there is a new front suspension setup. It's still a double wishbone, but it's just been completely reworked. Really helps with stability and with handling. Around corners, I'm not feeling nearly as much body roll. And even when I'm heading in a straight line at speed, I'm feeling a lot more stable. Go all out with the TRD Pro Tundra and you'll get 2.5 inch diameter internal bypass shocks which help with keeping things cool back there for when you're doing hard runs on washboard or in river washes or whoops. You get a locking rear diff and a front stabilizer bar. Those goodies all actually come with any 4x4 that has the TRD off-road package. So there's also an adaptive variable suspension that comes with the air suspension. Again, I have that on this truck. It adapts damping rates to conditions in the road. Right now, I have no complaints about it. It is 100% comfortable, and I'm on a road that is not tremendously smooth, so, so far, so good. You guys, I'm not exaggerating here when I say this is a complete, I mean, you can tell 
instantly when you get in this truck just how much better it is. So much more stability, so much more control, so much more comfort. I mean, I can't feel the little bumps in the road that I used to feel in the Tundra when driving around. I can 100% say that this is a marked improvement in this truck. Well done, Toyota. However, I'm still not forgiving you for that front end. Nope, not digging it. The grills are all way too big. Thanks in part to the Tundra's new power, it increased its max towing capacity. Incidentally, those numbers are for the base V6, not the hybrid. So guys, right now I'm gonna try trailer backup assist. My hands are off the wheel. I stay on the gas though, right? All right, here we go. I'm going backwards. Look, Ma, no hands. So the wheel, you can see the wheel's turning on its own. You can program up to 10 different trailers with this system. It's going back pretty straight. This is one of those things that, I mean, you probably can do it, but who wants to? It's like eating eggplant. So I like the idea, but I, I may just do it on my own. <laughs> not it's not perfect like humans of course the tundra is going to be heading off road so let's see how it goes when we get it on a bit of dirt so we're going to try the crawl control here to see what this system will do see if it's a little bit more refined than it was before so my feet are not on the pedals at all right now and the truck is making its way up. Yeah, it's a lot quieter. It's nice and smooth. Getting a little bit more power when I need it right now. Getting a little slip in the rear takes care of it. All right, guys. If you're not gonna do it yourself, it's a good option. So as expected, the TRD Pro pretty much just took care of everything out here that I expected it to. Um, especially because this is the iForce Max and it's got that 583 pound-feet of torque at 2400 RPM. It's impressive. So I want to talk about just the in-car driving experience for just a second. Um, obviously with this huge 14-inch touchscreen that's available on the limited trim and above, um, it's you can see it so clearly. The graphics are really clear. It actually gets over the air updates, so it's going to stay really current for you, which is a really nice thing. The overall design in here, I think is really striking. I love how the screen is integrated into the dash. I always appreciate that style. The seats are really comfortable. Everything seems really intuitively placed. Overall, again, a huge improvement over the last generation Tundra. Boop, 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 boop. Safety first. I'm not going to call it completely serene and quiet, but I am going to caveat that. These are pre-production trucks. Now, road noise with the TRD Pro's off-road tires was not whisper quiet, but you know what? Not hugely loud either. It was pretty much what I'd expect. The 1794's interior definitely felt more luxe. I didn't hear the wind whistling in that one the same that I did in that TRD Pro. Again, pre-production. Oh, and you can even use the voice activation system to help you get somewhere. Just enunciate, please. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are also standard, as is Toyota's Safety Sense 2.5 suite of safety features that includes adaptive cruise control. That's cool. So we'll definitely go into a whole lot more when it comes to the interior, but if you want to see a little bit more about what the Tundra has to offer, then go check out our first look video. Tundras come in many shapes and sizes, from the base SR, both two and four wheel drive, to the SR5, the Limited, Platinum, 1794, that's the luxury edition, and the TRD Pro models. There are two and four door cab options and three bed lengths available on the Tundra. And the Crew Max can now get the longer six and a half foot bed. So pricing is not available yet, but Toyota did warn us this morning that the Tundra is not a value proposition. So I'm eager to see what those prices come in at. Tundra goes on sale in December. If you're in the market for a full-size truck, you really do have some tough choices to make between the Ram 1500, Ford's F-150, and the Chevy Silverado. 
I don't envy you having to decide. That being said, the Tundra does catch up with those three when it comes to the interior experience, when it comes to towing capacity, and when it comes to the drivability of this truck. Is it enough to entice you? That's up to you.